Hey folks, welcome to part 12 of the Tableau Desktop Specialist Practice Exam Series. First question is going to be which of the following can be used to overlay two independent axes on the same pane? Is it going to be dual axis, double axis, uh, dual pane, or polynomial chart? Which of these is going, uh, going to allow you to overlay two, once again, independent axes, axes on the same pane. So for this, well, let's do it together. We're gonna dive right into Tableau. So what exactly is, you know, is the question referring to? Well, let's say you have something like, uh, you know, you're looking at sales over a period of time. So I'm gonna grab sales over here, which is a measure, and then the order date, and then we're gonna generate a line chart, right? So we have something like this. Um, and uh, as you can see, you know, over the years, you can see the sum of sales based on the year. Now, let's say I, you know, first of all, I can interchange this with a different measure. So I'm looking at sales, but what if I just want to look at profit, right? I can do that. So now we're looking at profit, as you could see, because now we're referencing all of those uh, values within the profit column. But what if you wanted to have both, right? So I could always drag another pill here. Um, but what's that going to do? That's going to generate basically another pane. So we have one pane for profit, and now we have another pane for sales, and now you kind of have two charts in one, basically. And uh, the question is more around how can we get both of these to kind of overlay on top of one another? So I just have one chart instead of two. So we're still going to have two lines, but we're going to have one chart because right now, if you look, this goes from 0K sales all the way to, you know, over 700, probably 800,000. But for profit, again, it starts at zero, but then it goes all the way to 100,000. So we're working with two different axes here, right? How can we consolidate those? Do we use a dual axis, double axis, dual pane, or polynomial chart? Which of these would be the correct solution? So once you have something like this, where you have two measures side by side in, in pills, um, if you right click the second one typically, so I'm right clicking sales because it's the second pill, I can actually uh, you know, hover over where it says dual axis and click on that once I right click. So when I click dual axis, what does that do? Now I have my sum of profit and my sum of sales all in one chart, right? Notice I only have one axis over here. And you're gonna notice there's one on the left side and one on the right side. That's a different, different story. But now we're working with one chart and we have both of these lines overlaying on one top of, you know, on top of one another, which we didn't in the past. You also notice once you have a dual pane, notice how, how one pill, it kind of curves on both sides. And over here, this looks like one giant pill, right? Because if you look in the middle, it's squared off. It's almost like the, the profit and the sales pill has been combined into one giant pill, if you really kind of pay attention. Um, and then uh, you do have different options. Like, yeah, I can right click because right now, these lines almost look like uh, they're identical, right? It, it would make you uh, think that sales and profit are somewhat aligned, but they're not because the profit axis is here, right? You're looking at 50,000 in profit, but if you look over here with, with the corresponding sales, you're looking at 400,000. So it's not apples to apples. And there are ways to do that. If you right click here, you can actually uh, synchronize the axis and that's gonna adjust the, uh, the axis. So now it's apples to apples. So now 350K on this side is equal to 350K on this side. And according, you, accordingly, you'll notice these lines make a lot more sense, right? The profit's obviously gonna be a lot lower than the actual revenue or sales. Um, and then you have the option of maybe hiding this axis so there, it's no longer redundant, right? So now you only have one axis and you have both sum of profit and sum of sales. One quick note, but by the way, uh, it is gonna be dual axis if you haven't noticed, right? So, cause I did right click and I went to dual axis. That's the official term. It's not double axis. It's not dual pane. It's not poly polynomial. But if you do look at the, uh, the documentation here, as you can see, it does say add dual axis where there are two independent axes layered in the same pane. That's when you would use uh, dual axis. But for pur purposes of this question, we use the dual axis approach. And of all of these different options, that is the only one that is applicable. So that's the solution over here. By the way, if you do enjoy videos like this, consider liking the video and subscribing for more content just like this. Next question. True or false, in dashboards, only one sheet can be displayed or visible at a time. True or false? 
So in a dashboard, is it true that you can only see one sheet at a given time? And uh, I assume what it's referring to is a worksheet, right? So I actually have two sheets over here, right? So I have my pie chart. So I'm basically looking at sum of sales by subcategory. So each slice of this pie chart, and I'll make this bigger, but each slice of this pie chart is effectively a subcategory. That is one worksheet, right? Um, if I go to this sheet, I have another sheet, profit by category. This one is basically sum of profit, right? So I'm looking at profit at a category level. So we have three overarching categories. So again, I have two sheets, sheet one, sheet two. So the question or the thesis is that you can't really have both on the same dashboard. So let's experiment. So I actually created a sale, let, let me just do it again. So let's create another dashboard, right? We're gonna call this, oh, I just deleted it. Right click and rename this to my sales dashboard. And what I'm gonna do, if you'll notice on the left hand side, these are all of our sheets that we can bring in. Right now, nothing is checked off, right? So I'm gonna bring in sheet number one, which is my pie, pie chart uh, sheet. See, as you can see here. And now you'll notice it's checked off. That means we have one worksheet in this dashboard. And now as for the second one, again, I'm gonna drag and drop this here. And now I have two worksheets in the same dashboard. So yes, you can have two worksheets in the same dashboard. Again, you'll notice both of them are checked off. And one other thing you'll maybe like to see here, if you go to the layout tab and kind of open up the tile view over here, if you click on a worksheet, it'll actually highlight where that is, right? So if I click on this profit by category worksheet, as you can see, we have a sheet over here, we have a sheet over here. So both sheets do exist on the same dashboard because you are able to do that. So only one sheet can be displayed at a time. This is gonna be false because obviously you can display multiple sheets on a dashboard. And in fact, that's one of the main points of having a dashboard. Next question, what type of visualization is best suited for analyzing the distribution of data within individual categories, right? So is it going to be box and whisker plot? Is it going to be line chart, pie chart, or scatter plot? So first of all, a lot of these might be common, others not so much. Let's start with the basic one, right? Maybe you haven't seen a box and whisker plot. Maybe you've seen a line chart. What is a line chart good for? Again, being able to visualize data over time. Is that going to help you see the distribution of data within an individual category? No, that's going to show you how a particular measure performs over time. So it can't be line chart. How about the third option, pie chart? What is a pie chart? Again, remember, parts of a whole, when you wanna compare maybe uh, one category against another in terms of a measure. But here we just wanna see the distribution of data within the same category. So that's not so ideal for a, for a pie chart. How about the fourth option, scatter plot? Again, remember scatter plot you typically use when you're comparing two measures against one another. So again, it's not gonna be something that's gonna be very useful to compare within an individual category. That leaves us with the first option, but what is, what is a box and whisker uh, plot, right? So uh, let's start with this example, right, since we're here because we have three categories here. And let's say I just wanna maybe focus on the underlying values of furniture. So let me create a duplicate sheet so we leave this one untouched. And uh, let's filter out everything except for furniture. So we're just looking at furniture. And now if I go to show me over here, I'm gonna hover over where it says box and whisker plots where you need zero or more dimensions and you need one or more measures, right? So I'm gonna click on that and you'll notice it doesn't really show anything meaningful. And the reason why, as of now, again, part of this using a box and whisker plot um, is to be able to see the distribution of data. You can't really see that if you're just summing everything up, right? So I'm looking at sum of profit. We have to de-aggregate the data. For that, I'm gonna go to the analysis tab I'm gonna uncheck aggregated measures because by default, Tableau will aggregate measures. Notice it no longer says sum of profit, it just says profit. What does that mean? Now I'm actually seeing every single data point. It's not just summing all the rows, but now I can see each individual row, each underlying value as a separate data point. And on the bottom left, you could see it says 2201 marks. That means there are 2,201 2, different rows as it pertains to profit within the furniture category. And this is what a box and whisker uh, plot looks like. It's a very 
it's, it's going to be hard to see over here just because of the distribution of data that we have here. So let me do something real quick, right? I'm going to bring in profit over here and I'm going to say, just give me everything between negative 400 all the way to 400. Right, and that should maybe help us see things a little bit better. So that's our box and whisker uh, plot. Again, how is this useful? I can see the distribution of data, right? I can see what my median is. It's 8.1 over here, right? I can see the interquartile range, right? This, so this is gonna be my 75th percentile. This is gonna be my 25th percentile, meaning you know 25% of my values are under this line over here and 75% are under this line over here. And 75% of my values are under this line over here. And then this is you know, a multiplier. So you can modify this, but it sets, I believe, 1.5. So 1.5 times the intraquartile range, which is between the 25th and 75th percentile. We'll cover this in a later video maybe, but again, for purposes of this question, we really just wanna see the distribution of data within a particular category. The box and whisker plot is definitely the go-to over here based on the other examples we've seen. In fact, one more reference to the Tableau documentation here. When would you build a box plot? Use box plots, also known as bo box and whisker plots, to show the distribution of values along an axis. So there you go, that's gonna be the solution over here. Next question, true or false, dragging a discrete dimension to colors on the marks card will result in a gradient color palette based on the underlying values, true or false. So what is this saying? Let's, let's open up a new sheet over here. And uh, I guess to demonstrate this, we will have uh, one discrete dimension and one continuous measure. And we'll make sure it's a bar chart um, like this, just to just to be able to demonstrate, right? So the question says, if I drag a discrete dimension, again, that's gonna be your blue pill, essentially, and preferably a dimension. If we drag it to color on the Mars card, does that result in a gradient color pal uh, palette? In other words, uh, when you have a color palette that's kind of sequentially increasing in the intensity of color, but it's the same color. I'll show you an example. So again, we're looking at subcategory over here, which is a dimension. If I drag that to color over here, um, and then first of all, as you can see, you don't really notice a gradient. You see individual unique colors, but when you click on color over here, let's say you wanted to adjust the color or some of those settings, you'll notice that you have a bunch of color palettes to choose from, right? It's, it's basically, a different unique color that you can then assign over here if you wanted to. So accessories is predefined, appliances is predefined. Everything is predefined because whatever uh, you know color palette you set here is ultimately what's going to show up over here. So the idea that um, you know dragging a discrete dimension in this case we you know we're using we're just using a dimension. Does that result in a gradient color palette? It does not. Um, conversely, if I had something like sales, right? Let's, let's say I use sales to color this. Now it's a gradient, right? You'll notice that now it's the same color, but the intensity of the color is changing because now we are working with a gradient. Again, if I click on color, I go to edit, edit colors. I no longer have that drop down of here's a color palette, here's what you assign each value. Because now that it's a measure, these colors, the, the, the tone of the color is going to be dictated by again, as the question says, the underlying values, right? So you'll notice it goes all the way from 8,532 in terms of sales, all the way to 335,768. And that's what's gonna dictate the brightness or how dark the color is, right? It goes from light to dark. And correspondingly, you notice that art has one of the lowest sales and that's why it's one of the lighter colors as opposed to chairs, which is one of the higher colors like phones and those accordingly have the higher sales. So again, dragging a discrete dimension to color on the marks card will result in a gradient color palette. This is going to be false because as we have just seen, dragging any discrete measure or a dimension is gonna result in uh, basically a color palette where you assign individual colors as opposed to a gradient that you would actually see when you bring in a measure based on the underlying value. So that's gonna be the solution here. Quick pause, if you like these videos but you're serious about acing the Tableau Desktop Specialist Practice Examiner Certification, I've got news for 
for you. Check out the link in the description if you're interested in practicing with an even more realistic set of practice exam questions. There are at least five different practice exams, 45 questions each, with the proper distribution of exam topic areas. You'll know exactly which questions you got right or wrong and what the correct solutions were. Now, there are a limited number of spots available, so be sure to take advantage of the limited time offer because as you know, practice makes perfect. And that's a wrap. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them down below. I appreciate your support. And of course, as always, I will catch you on the next one. Thank you for watching. Yeah.